Hey guys, welcome to Thriving Thursday. Um, I am so excited because we are continuing our um, Thriving Thursdays with a little bit of education on health and wellness. Um, and so we're going to be talking about sleep a little bit more today. I know we kind of dove into it a little, a little bit on March 11th with Tanisha from Holy Humans when we were talking about the daily essentials. Um, however, we're going to dive in a little bit deeper today because sleep is one of those things that a lot of us kind of don't pay attention to, right? We don't really look at it as if it's really important. Um, you know, it, it's not an essential thing, but it is you guys. And so I've got my notes. So if you see me looking up, that's what I'm doing. Um, but you guys, I want to be able to, um, you know, help you to understand why we sleep, um, why we need to pay attention to the sleep and um, and how we can get there and get better sleep. Right. So um, let's dive into that. So um, sleep is essential, you guys, in our health and in our well-being. It's how our body restores all of the functions, all the organ functions. Um, it stabilizes chemical imbalance. It refreshes our brain, which then controls mood behavior um, and performance. And you guys, we need to be just careful of that, right? Because if you have ever woken up and you feel groggy and you just don't have it together, you might not have gotten a really good night's sleep. So why is it important, you guys? Um, you know, adjusting our sleep patterns and stuff are going to support your energy, your actual physical strength, um, and it's going to allow you to thrive, which is what we're always talking about on Thriving Thursdays, is how to thrive, how to get the knowledge and information that we need so that we can thrive in our lives. Um, so, you know, when we go to sleep at night, we want to be able to get as much sleep as we can. So think of yourself as a cell phone. You're going to be plugging that in, right? And then when you wake up in the morning, that cell phone is at 100%. That's how we should be. That's how we should take care of our bodies um, and let it get that really restorative uh, sleep patterns at night. So here's why we sleep or why we don't want to miss out on sleep. You guys, we should be sleeping about seven and a half hours minimum a night. I'm going to pause there. Are we all getting at least seven and a half hours of sleep a night? Well, we should be. And so what happens when we sleep? Why do we sleep? How do we how do we even get there? Um, you know, we have glands in our brains um, that produce melatonin. OK, we've all heard about melatonin. Um, our bodies produce melatonin, you guys. Um, so we don't need to give it melatonin. And when we give it melatonin, studies have shown that our body stops producing melatonin. So we don't want that because melatonin is what's produced in our brain. It's a super powerful um, hormone that is produced and it helps lull us. It helps get us ready, right? Cools our body down and helps get us ready to go to sleep. So our body already produces that. We don't need to add melatonin to that. Um, of course, again, like I said, we don't want to risk not having our body, um, having those hormones uh, come out naturally. We don't want to do that by giving it extra melatonin. Um, and you guys, when we would sleep normally, right back in the day, we would sleep between sunset and sunrise. We went to sleep when the lights went out, right? When the natural lights went out, that's when we went to sleep, you know, and thank you Edison for the light bulb, but Hey, that started to disrupt, disrupt our sleep. Same thing with TVs, phones, computers, games, all of these things that we now have, all of this technology that we now have is disrupting our sleep patterns. So it's no wonder that 80 million Americans are struggling for a good night's sleep. Okay. That's just Americans. That's not talking about, um, 
That's not talking about the rest of the world, you guys. That's only 80 million Americans that are having trouble sleeping. Um, so what causes you to lose sleep? Um, life, right? Stress, your work, um, coming home, you're always thinking about what has to be done. Do I have to take the kids here or there? Do I need to um, go to doctor's appointments or, you know, when life was normal, there was games and all sorts of things that we'd had to do. We're always going in this modern world, right? We're going, going, going all the time. Um, but there are a few things that I want to share with you that if you continue to lose sleep, if you continue to not get your sleep regimen down, these are a couple of things that can happen. And I'm just going to look at my list right now. One of them for sure, I know right off the bat, is depression. Okay. Um, depression can come with lack of sleep, you guys. Um, loss of perception, judgment, reaction time. Reaction time, you guys. When we're working 17-hour days, our reaction time and our time to make really good judgments, it's gone. It's gone. Literally, if you have been up for 17 hours, your mind starts to act as if you've been drinking like two glasses of wine. Okay. Um, if you were to add 24 hours, right, you're up for 24 hours, your brain is now acting as if you've been drinking four glasses of wine. You guys, the perception and the judgment or lack thereof that is happening because of lack of sleep is ridiculous. It's crazy, you guys. Um, it also affects uh, weight gain, our immune system. It increases inflammation in our body. I am literally here to say uh, I never used to sleep well, and uh, the inflammation was coming out of every orifice. Like, I just have been so... Um, unhealthy when it comes to that part of my um, of my issues. Inflammation has been a huge part of my issues, which is why I am trying to watch what I'm eating, watch what I'm drinking, take the supplements that I need to, um, to help improve that because that is a big, big deal for me. Also, you guys, another thing that um, I had mentioned on the title or in the description for this Thriving Thursday today um, was bright line curfews. What is that? Well, basically, they're just boundaries. So boundaries that we have to give ourselves um, for what we can and can't accomplish in the day, right? Um, hey, Jeff, how are you? Thanks for watching. Um, we have to put those boundaries up, you guys. And here's a couple examples of what I'm talking about. So um, you're getting ready for bed. What does that, not even getting ready for bed, but you've already worked your eight hours. Now you've come home. You've got things to deal with. You guys, let's deal with the big things first, right? Whatever we have to get ready at home, um, conversations that we may have to have, work things that we may be bringing home or that we have to do at work, get all those things done first, right? Then eight hours before you go to bed, right? It's different for everybody. So whatever time that is for you. Lay off the coffee eight hours ahead of time. Five hours ahead of time, lay off the caffeine of any kind. Three hours, no, sorry, four hours before bed, no exercise. I know that could be hard for some people because we're so busy and we go to the gym super late or we work out super late, but it's best four hours before you go to bed to not have any exercise. Three hours before bed, lay off the alcohol. Um, two hours before bed, again, any work, any, you know, real life conversations that you have to have, interactions that you have to have like that. Um, we want to bring those things to a minimum two hours before we go to bed. Um, and so just getting those things in line, you guys, are going to help you to create better sleep habits for yourself. Um, you know, what do those habits look like? Setting a bedtime. Do you all have bedtimes? I know in our house, between 8.30 and 9.30, that's it for us. 
So people know um, either don't call or you might not get a response <laughs> because we go to bed early in the Osborne household because my husband works early. And so he has to go to sleep. Now, I used to stay up later because I don't have a set time where I need to get up. But for my sanity and um, for my marriage and all that good stuff, I decided to change that and instead of staying up until 12 or one o'clock in the morning, I go to bed with my husband. And that's a whole nother live, so we won't go there tonight. But you guys, um, setting a bedtime and setting a daily routine is key. When we do things in routines, our body gets used to it. Um, everything starts to align. When we are doing things that, you know, and I used to, thrive off of being this person like oh i'm living life you know by the seat of my pants i'm super spontaneous i go do this and this if you call me i'm going to go meet you i'm going to go out i'm going to you know do whatever it is that i have to do and not worry about what time i go to sleep cuz we can all sleep when we die right how many times have we heard that um and that was who i was and I was lacking some major sleep and it caused a lot of issues, a lot of health issues, a lot of weight gain, a lot of all those things that I went over earlier. Um, so getting a daily routine together as much as you can having that same routine. And some people even say like when you're working out or you're trying to um, have a really good nutrition program, you know, it's okay to, to eat boring. It's okay to eat the same things every day because you're trying to get to a certain goal, right? So that's okay. If you have heard, you know, like have, um, you know, fish and asparagus or, you know, chicken and salad or whatever, when you're trying to lose weight, it, it's a real thing. You guys routine is a real thing. Um, and it can really help us. Um, also you guys not using your snooze button. Who's guilty of using the snooze button not once or twice, but maybe three times, okay? I hate using the snooze button. I do it from time to time, but let me tell you, it annoys me because my son and my husband do it all the time. So they may set their alarm to go off at like four in the morning and then they're snooze, snooze, snooze. Well, light sleeper. Um, I get to hear it all the time. And so then that disrupts my sleep as well. So you guys don't use the snooze button. Um, one of the best things that you can do as a daily routine is to get up early and just get right out of bed. Not even early, but whenever you're going to get up, get right out of bed. Don't hit the snooze button. Don't sit in bed and check your phone, right? You don't want to confuse your brain, which should be thinking. When I enter the bedroom, it's time for me to turn off. When the lights are dimming and the lights are off, you know, going off, it's time for me to go to sleep. You don't want to wake up and then get on your phone, you know, and we're checking our emails and we're checking our text messages and all of those things from bed. You guys get out of bed, start your day. That's going to help you um, not only with your energy, but be more productive in life. Um, making your bed. That's another uh, sticky one for some people. Um, I make my bed and put out all eight pillows <laughs> and make my husband do the same. Whoever gets out of the bed last has to make the bed. Um, that is just kind of one of our daily routines that we do. Um, eating responsibly. Again, you guys, um, not going past three hours before your sleep time. Um, so getting a really good uh, routine for your dinner time. Um, for us lately, we have been moving our dinner time to between 6 and 6.30 again. It was a lot later before. We were, again, doing all the things people you know, wanted us to do and wanted us to be a part of and stuff like that. Well, now, hey, if we don't get dinner at 6 or 6.30, Maybe we can't go to that event. Maybe we can't do that thing because right now for our goals, um, our routine is the most important thing and it should be for you too. Um, we have to stop being that person that just makes everybody else happy, but yet your body is paying for it, right? 
we're about thriving here, right? I, I want you guys to learn how to thrive in your life, um, how to thrive with your sleep, how to thrive with your nutrition, all of these things. So um, also you guys, uh, eliminating, sorry, I'm like going back to the list, eliminating technology, like I said before. Uh, before we had TVs and phones and computers, it literally was, you know, sunset. That's when we started to to lull ourselves, to to get ready for bed, to, you know, people back in the in the those days, right? Stop traveling because the sun was gonna be no longer. You didn't have any more light. So um minimizing technology, minimizing um, any kind of liquid two hours before bed. So guilty, so guilty, you guys. I am always drinking water all day long. And um, sometimes if I don't get my 100 ounces of water, that is my goal. Um, by a certain time, I, I like, you know, say, oh, I'm just going to have a little bit more and a little bit more. And my husband's great to tell me that, like, no, you're done. It, it's time you're done. No more water for you because that's going to disrupt my sleep because then what's going to happen? I'm going to get up continuously throughout the night because I have to go to the bathroom. Um, another thing, medications or supplements, you guys, um, within an hour from the time you're going to go to bed, give your body time to get those things moving and, and let them do what they're supposed to do in your body. Um, some things, yes, while you're sleeping, of course they will work. Um, that's fine. Um, but give yourself at least an hour um, with some medications. Everybody's going to be different on that one. So don't quote me because it's really what your doctor has set out for you with that certain medication. Um, but supplements and stuff, you guys, um, you know, within an hour from the time that you're going to go to sleep. So for um, some other ways to help you guys get a better routine, not even a routine, but um, what can help you in your home to sleep better? Um, the color of your room, you guys, it's, it's as easy as these things. The color of your room. If you have dark or really bright colors in your room, even on your bed, um, those things are, are bringing like stimulation, right? Because your eyes are seeing it. Your brain is getting stimulated. That's not relaxing. We want to have very neutral tones in our bedroom. Um, we want to avoid fluorescent lighting. Um, you know, the, here's these little blue glasses, whatever they're called, um, because we don't want to have that. And and also the radiation from our phones and stuff like that. That's another thing that causes um, disruption in our sleep patterns as well. Um, scents, you guys. Uh, candles used to be the big thing. Then the diffusers came out. Um, essential oils, That that's what we use in our house. Um, we love to have some lavender in a diffuser before bed. It calms us, it calms the dogs. Um, it helps to have a really good scent um, in your home to just help relax, right? And when you want that energy boost, pump it up to peppermint or something, you know? Uh, check with your oil lady on that one. But um, another thing is sound, um, maybe, some relaxing music or some meditation. Um, when I had a hard time sleeping, I would meditate and I would do my breathing and I would stop and just be still, right? Because because we need to sometimes force our bodies to just stop. Because like I said, modern world, go, 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 go all the time. So we need to force ourselves to, to have that moment to stop and, um, and start to get our bodies ready for bed. And my favorite part, you guys, as you can see, I'm super hot right now. So it's tank top for me right now, but temperature in your room when you go to sleep, is suggested to be 68 degrees. Yay! Okay, I love it because I cannot sleep when it's hot. I'm like miserable right now because it's so hot. I never put ice in my drink, but I just want to hold it. 
I just want to touch it because I'm so hot right now. Um, so I don't like to sleep when it's hot and I can't get to sleep when it's hot. So the suggested temperature to have in your room is 68 degrees. So you're welcome, ladies. Um, and clutter. That's the last thing I'm going to say about what to do to help your sleep patterns when you're in your home is clutter, especially in your bedroom, you guys. Make your bedroom that safe haven, right? It's it's that comfy, cozy um, place of peace. And that is going to help you guys get better sleep. Now, I'm going to end it with this because uh, you all know that I have been advocating the supplements that I've been taking for the last year because it has helped me immensely. So there are people that need a little bit extra. Um, I can sleep nine to 10 hours a night. Obviously, if I go to bed at eight or eight 30 or nine 30, I don't get up till seven. Uh, I get plenty of downtime sleep. But that deep sleep, because I run my businesses, because I have so many things going on, sometimes I struggle getting to sleep, to that deep sleep, because there are so many levels of sleep. And you guys, I think we go into four or six 90-minute um, uh, sections of sleep. I know that's not the right word. Um, but sometimes we need more, and that's okay. But like I said, be careful with the melatonin. That is something our body produces. Um, when you start giving it more melatonin, it will stop producing its own melatonin, and then you get stuck on it. And we don't want to do that. So be careful what it is that you're um, taking as a sleep supplement. And make sure that you're not having to take something to wake up too, right? You want to be able to wake up and not feel groggy. You want to feel energized. You want to know that that supplement is helping you get the best deep sleep that you can get. So anyway, you guys, I hope that was helpful. And um, I hope that you guys get a good night's sleep and that some of those tips are something that you can incorporate into your life. And um, that's it for today. I will talk to you next Thursday where I'm going to hopefully be coming to you from Cabo San Lucas. Um, and we are going to be doing our um, second Thriving Thursday with the autoimmune typhoon, Tyler Walsh. We're going to be finishing up what we started last week because his story is so amazing. And, you know, uh, we wanted to finish up with him. So we're going to be seeing you next Thursday from Cabo and we will see you then. Bye guys.